All right, hey guys, Johnny Nerd out here. Today I want to be talking about, well, I want to talk about this bike that we built and more importantly about the motor that we use because of the bike that we have some constraints and all that. So I want to talk about if you have a bike like this, this is the motor system you're going to want to go with. Okay, so if you guys are new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerd out. I'm a custom e-bike builder. I've got a shop behind us. We sell all the components that you're going to see here. Go to johnnynerdout.com if you need questions about your build. You're not sure what to do you're into maybe you're into building a motorcycle you're into converting your boat to electric whatever you're into solar stuff you're not really quite sure what to do go to johnnynerdout.com we can help you there okay so this is the problem that a lot of people have I get, I get asked this question a lot hey i got a cruiser bike but it's got coaster brakes so it means i have to like pedal backwards to hit the brakes all mid drives have a freewheeling crank, which means you could just usually spin it backwards. It's not going to do anything. You see, there's no brakes anywhere. There's no front brake. The only rear brake is the coaster brake that's built into this three speed hub. So for the most part, most mid drives are out of the question, but Tong Shang makes a motor. This is the TDZS2. This is a 250 watt mid drive motor. Now there was a 500 watt version. Uh, that I guess had some problems, there was, th there was issues. So they came back out with it. It's a 250 watt version now, so I think it's a lot more reliable. But this has no freewheeling crank, which means you could be going forward and then pull, push backwards like a normal bike, and it's going to engage the brakes. Obviously with only one rear brake, I don't think you want to have like 1,000 watts or 750 watts. You could get into trouble quick with this. So I think honestly a 250 watt torque sensing motor is perfect to pair with a coaster brake. And this one's kind of cool because it's got the three speed integrated transmission. So you still get the benefits of a mid drive, although it's only three speeds, the gear ratio, I'm not quite sure off the top of my head, it's probably like 100, 150% gear ratio, but you still get a low, a medium and a high. Um, I was able to top out around 20 miles an hour on this pedaling, but the acceleration is actually fairly zippy and I'll show you here. Make sure I'm in first gear, and then if you just go. Let's see. So yeah, it's got a little bit of zip to it. It's definitely way better than nothing. Um, obviously, when you electrify something, 250 watts is essentially doubling the amount of power that I could do. Definitely good. If you're looking for a speed machine, probably not the way to go. This one's got the chain guard in it. We were able to just bend it a little bit so it fit over it, able to reuse it. And we do got different size chain rings on here. I believe this is the 42 tooth. But anyway, so a lot of you guys have got these old Schwinn cruisers. You got these old bikes that have coaster brakes on it. You're like, ah, I wanted to convert it, but I don't want to put a hub motor in it. Ah, this is a great way to go. It has to be 68 millimeters, 68 to 73 millimeter bottom bracket width. And if you have, this one had a standard BSA bottom bracket, which means the inner diameter was about 34 millimeters. A lot of your coaster brake older ones are gonna have the Ashtabula, um, the American bottom bracket, which I believe is like 54 millimeters wide. It's way bigger. So you're gonna have a giant massive hole there. Head to johnnydurdot.com. We've got the Ashtabula, to BSA adapters. So it's like a big hole with a little offset in there so it, you could mount a normal motor in that older style. So you could definitely convert one of these if you've got a coaster brake bike. Yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out. Head to johnnynerdout.com if you've got any questions. Thanks guys.